Hey guys, what's up? Thank you so much for tuning in today here at Elevate Church. We know that today's message is going to rock your world and elevate your life to the next level. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the message. And I've been on this, this mission to, to really stir your heart up, to not, to not allow yourself. Look at someone next to you and say, don't allow yourself. To be the same, you can't, you can't even think, you can't even think to enter this year living the same, talking the same, doing the same. Like you can't, uh, I, I want to shake off that, that same spirit out of you and just like stir you up and say, you know what, enough. Um, God wants to do something incredible in each and every one of your lives. But that requires action. You know what? I've been speaking on ready, set. Okay, well, guess what? Uh, you're not going to grow by doing nothing or just praying, which I'm a firm believer in prayer. Uh, I'm a firm believer in reading my word. Uh, I'm a firm believer in meditating on God's word. But I'm also a doer. You know what I'm saying? There are two types of believers in the church. There are doers and then there's just hearers. People that just come here to elevate and they just listen to a message. And they go back to their same life. You know what? Their same way of thinking. Their same way of believing. And nothing changes. And I know that tonight is our first Ignite of, of 2018. But I, I want to... I want to bring us uh, back to the place of having an intimate, personal relationship with the Holy Spirit. Because if Jesus thought that it was, um, it was vital for him to, to be filled with the Holy Spirit in order to accomplish the Father's mission, then how much more should we, we the people, we the church, uh, desire to have a very close and personal relationship with the Holy Spirit who will lead us and guide us. And, and listen, uh, this is one thing I tell my staff a lot. I'm like, you know, you got to pray in the Holy Ghost because, you know what, the level that God has taken to elevate church, it, it's just if you're not praying in the Spirit, you're not going to make it to that next level. You're, you're just not. Because how many know that there is a truth? And I know it's a cliche statement, new level, new devil, right? It's kind of like. It is cliche, new level, new devil. But it's true. You know, at every level, there's more trouble. At every level, there's more challenges. But at every level, there's more reward, right? There's more blessing. Um, there's more victory. There's more breakthrough. And, uh, and I'm going to focus this year and even now uh, just preparing you. I want to prepare intentionally. The words I'm going to be speaking to the church are going to be very intentional to push us forward. And, uh, and there's big things that are taking place at Elevate Church in 2018. And you'll be hearing about them in the next few weeks. And uh, I'm telling you, it's the year of action. It's the year of action. you got to wake up every day and you got to look in the mirror and say, Mauricio, action. you got to say your name, action. Come on. we gotta, we got to go ahead and, uh, and finish whatever it is that God has put in your heart in 2018. Don't be so much concerned about 2019. 2018 is enough. And so, but you got to stay focused, you got to get ready, then you got to be set and then grow. And if you're going to grow this year, um, you have to know this truth. And here's something I want to talk about tonight. The truth is this, I am what I allow. I am what I allow. Say it with me, I am what I allow. And that's true. Uh, look at this. I am what I allowed yesterday, today. How about this one? I am what I allow today, tomorrow. So we have to come to the conclusion that I am what I allow. So if I'm going to be the person that, that understands that I am what I allow, then that means you got to take personal responsibility for your life. And taking personal responsibility is coming to your reality. It's coming to the place of truth. If you don't come to the place of truth, then nothing's going to change. Nothing's going to change. I don't care how many sermons you hear on change. Uh, I said this on Sunday. I don't care how, how much furniture you change in your house. Listen, it starts internally. It starts with you. But I am... I allow. 
I am what I allow. I am what I allow. I am. You got you to gotta, you gotta chew on that. I am what I allow. What are you allowing right now? Because what you're allowing right now is what's determining who you're going to be this year. And that's why, um, man, I want to come out in 2018 in this church. Every time you come, I'm just going to just, boom, hit you really hard. I am. I'm going to hit you hard. I'm just going to just, ah. And, and, uh, and, and it's, for, it's for an intentional reason. I, I want to see you grow. I want to see you grow. I want to see you grow spiritually. I want to see you grow relationally. I want to see you grow socially. I want to see you grow in faith. I want to see you grow in love. I want to see you grow in forgiveness. I want to see us grow in humility. Humility would be awesome, wouldn't it? I want to see us grow in honor. There's so much disrespect in the church. Remember, honor is not what you, what you give. It's who you are. I am honor. Amen? Come on. I am what I allow. Um, you have to ask yourself, hopefully you did what I said on Sunday, or I forgot what day I said it, Wednesday. But you start writing down, you know, some of the things that, you're, that you have to take responsibility for. For example, you can honestly say to yourself, you know what, um, I'm the one who allowed my financial debt. I'm the one who allowed myself to overeat. I'm the one who allowed myself to be in this place of being sick. I am the one who allowed myself to be in this place at work where I'm not being promoted. I am the one that allowed, see, I am what I allow. And once you take responsibility of what you and I allowed, and once we come clean and we say, God, okay, I need to change this whole you know what, allowing myself to, to be dysfunctional, allowing myself to be unfaithful, allowing myself to not trust you, to not believe you. Lord, I, I'm going to change this allowance I've given myself and I'm going to start entering into this inheritance that you're trying to give me. God has an inheritance for you this year. But God needs you to allow him to get you through 2018 his way, his way. And I say this way, his way because I think there's been too many of us in the church, okay, all of us, I'm sure, all of us in some area of our life where we haven't taken God's word at face value. We haven't taken his word completely with, with, with a genuine heart set or mindset. And, uh, and this is the year where God's saying, I want you to take every single word from the Bible, and I want you to believe it, and I want you to get a hold of it, because we're going to grow this year uh, in, in, in leaps and bounds that, you know what, the people that know you are going to say, wow, you're just, you're not the same person from 20. There's something different about you. There's something about you that just, it's just different. Donnie, stand to your feet, man. I'm telling you. There's just, there's something on your life. I know it's the Holy Spirit, but there's something, there's something specific that, that God wants to accomplish in your life, but the enemy has worked overtime in your life. Like over and over again, to the point where, where there's been moments where you even question whether or not you really, you know, you really believe this, or, you know, you, you, you sometimes feel like this disconnect, you know, from, from your reality. And, and God's saying, no, son, I'm going to heal those places in your life. And, and it's not going to take years. It's going to take uh, days, weeks, and, and, and for some, just months. But you have to allow God. You have to allow him to do what he's going to do in your life. I'm telling you, in the next six months, you will not even recognize yourself. There's going to be some, and this is not cliche, I'm telling you. As you're in this place, the anointing of God is going to lift the burden, is going to destroy the yokes of bondage. And God is going to completely open the gate of freedom and deliverance and healing and restoration and reconciliation. And there's going to be something that God's going to download in your life. And, and I'm telling you, the things that you did then, um, they'll be better now.
they're going to be so much better now. There's going to be so much more meaning to your life. It's almost like you've lost meaning, but God's going to restore meaning to your life, and it's going to be better. It's going to be, it's going to be something that's going to be supernatural, but you've got to allow God to do what he's going to do this year. And, uh, and so get ready, I'm telling you. You watch and see. Remember this guy. Remember this guy. As you watch and see. Six months. I say six months. Something is just going to just boom, break forth. It's going to break forth, I'm telling you. So uh, stay, stay firm. Stay in the word because God's going to just, re, it's going to be crazy. Uh, I, I, I can't wait to see what God's going to do with your life. Uh, I'm not kidding you. I can't wait. I can't wait. It's going to be amazing. All right. You ready? Awesome. Very good. Say it again. I am what I allow. I am what I allow in 2018. Yeah, you are. You're going to be what you allow. Robert, you're going to be what you allow. You got to allow yourself, man, to be the man that God called you to be. You got to allow yourself. You have to give yourself permission. Alfonso, you got to allow yourself. You got to allow God to do what he wants to do. He's not finished. Don't, don't ever think that, okay, it's time. I get to take a break now. No, it's not break time. It's go time. It's do time. You know, God has, God has developed so much inside of you. Uh, you're not the same man when you first walked into this place. I know that for a fact. You're not. I can still remember you first coming in here very standoffish, very quiet. But, man, inside of you is a, is a lion. God, God needs that lion. And, uh, and I'm telling you, Alfonso, um, this is the year of action for you. And I really believe that God's going to reveal something to you. You've been, you've been, it's almost like you've been, you've been bored, you know, and you just don't know what to do with yourself. And it's not that you're lazy because I know you're not. I mean, you worked for the fire department for a bazillion years and you retired. But I'm telling you, man, the fire of the Holy Spirit is just going to engulf you with, with, with power and with wisdom from above, it's going to be unique, man. So I'm telling you, get ready. Get ready. Get ready, get ready, get ready. Look at this. If we're going to grow in 2018, then we need to learn how to obey the voice of God and not, and not obey anything you want. Look at what it says in 1 Corinthians 10, 23. Are you guys here tonight? Y'all excited? We're going to get back into prayer and see where God leads us tonight. But look at this. 1 Corinthians 10, 23, it says this. You say, I have the right to do anything. I'm sure you do. Everybody has the right to do anything. I have the right to do anything, but not everything is helpful. Again, you say, I have the right to do anything. <laughs> but not everything builds us up. I have the right. You all have the right to do anything this 2018. But it's not going to necessarily be beneficial. You have the right to choose the person you want to date, but it may not build you up. You have the right to choose the career you want, but it may not necessarily build you up. This is the year where we have to obey the voice of God. This is the year where you have to say, no longer will I make a decision based on my opinion. I'm going to dig deep in the scriptures and I'm going to allow the voice of God to speak to me and to allow me, to allow me to understand what he wants for me this year. And that takes, that takes, uh, that takes some maturity. That takes some, some taking time, opening the Bible, and, and seeking the scriptures with the intention of saying, God, speak to me. Speak to me. That takes maturity, guys. That takes maturity. Just because we have the title Christian doesn't mean we're mature. Maturity comes through relationship with the Father, intimacy. That's where that maturity begins to grow us. I'm telling you, I'm praying that this will be the year of great maturity for many of us here at Elevate Church. That we would take things serious. And yes, I get it. I have the right to do anything. But guess what? Not, everything, not anything you're going to do is going to build you up this year. So you have to think quick. You have to think quick. What do I mean quick? The Bible says, allow the Holy Spirit to quicken you. We can't waste time this year. We have to focus on things that are going to build us up, not tear us down. That means we got to get around the right they. Not every they is the right person. 
you got to understand that I challenge you to, to take a friend Venturi this year. Okay, take a friend Venturi. And, and begin to see, okay, all right, I got these friends I've been hanging with, okay. God loves them, all right. God loves them. But it's probably not building me up. Uh, it's probably not taking me to the level I need to go. Uh, they're probably not taking me the direction I need to be. And so, once again, God loves them, but you have to be honest um, I, I started my friend inventory the, the, the last three months, and, um, and I added some new friends into my circle of influence. Why? Because I know where God's taking me in 2018. And, and right now, I'm spending time with some major giants in, 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 in the kingdom. Uh, why? Uh, because I, I don't want to waste 2018. I, I think many of us can say that, how many would say 2017 was a rough year, man? It was just like, wow. It was rough. But guess what? But take responsibility. I wonder why it was rough. What did you do? What did you allow? Right? And you have to say, okay, in, in 2017, I allowed clack, 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 clack. But 2018, man, uh-uh. 2018, I'm going to allow God to just jack me up for good. And to do something incredible on the inside of me. This is your year, Nicole. I'm telling you. No, no more. No. Don't, don't bring in anything from 2017. Don't even dare. Don't you dare. I mean it. This woman, there's something new about you tonight. There really is. There's just like this, like, uh, the best way I can describe it is like, like the spirit of God is just all over you. Don't allow the frustration of what you see move you anymore enough stop letting your eyes trick you don't don't allow that no more don't do that this is the year where you're going to say god i'm not going to allow that anymore to bring me down no more i'm going to allow the joy of the lord to be my strength 2018 i'm allowing you guys see but that takes spiritual maturity because you have to you have to you have to die to yourself. You have to die to your ideas in order to step into the joy of the Lord is my strength. But God's going to do it. God's going to do it. Don't you worry about anything. God wants you to focus on you this year. It's the year of Nicole. You hear me? That's, that's, that's a word for you. It's the year of Nicole. And God's going to do something inside of you. And when the waves and the winds come, girl, you're going to be speaking to the storms. You're no longer going to talk about the storms. You watch and see. And they're going to obey you. They're going to obey you. Are you ready? Hmm. You have the right to do anything. Sure you do. <laughs> but not everything's beneficial. Yeah, I have the right to be mad. Yeah, you do. It's probably not building you up. I have the right to tell them what, what's on my mind. Yeah. But it's probably not going to, you know, help you. So we got we to gotta, we gotta change in 2018. Look at what Jesus, Jesus had a lot to say about I am. Look at this. Look up on the screens. He says, I am the bread of life. I am the light of the world. I am the good shepherd. I am the gate. I am the resurrection. I am the way, the truth, and the life. I am the vine. I am the voice of the burning bush. I am knowledge. I am understanding. I am wisdom. I am counsel. I am that I am. I mean, Jesus had no problem talking about who he was. And that's what God wants us to talk about this year. He wants you to say, I am the blessed when I come in, and I am the blessed when I go out. I am the head and not the tail. I am above and not beneath. I am more than a conqueror. I am the friend of God. I am the strength to my family. I am the joy of the Lord around the areas I go to. I am victorious. 
I'm financially blessed. I'm healthy. I'm whole. I am healed. Huh? You begin to talk about what you are. I am. It, too many of us talk about, man, I am broke. I am suck. You know. Uh, I, am, I am dumb. I am not good enough. I am, I am worthless. I am, and you, you can finish your I am's, but this is the year where God's saying, okay, it's time to change our language this year. Why? I am that I am. He has a lot to say about I am. I am, I am, I am, but you're going to start speaking that I am the righteousness of God. I am holy. And listen, holy simply this, be better tomorrow than you were today. That's holiness. Amen? I am holy. I am the righteousness. I am the apple of his eye. I am favored. I am being promoted. I am kind. I am generous. I am a peacemaker. I am the wisdom of God. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. Say that one with me. I am filled with the Holy Spirit. <laughs> That's what I want to talk about tonight because I know you didn't come to Ignite just to hang out. We want to talk about this because guess what? The only way to tap into the I am is by the Holy Spirit. Jesus spoke to 500 disciples, 500 people. After he told them who I am. And he said, I want you guys to go and wait in the upper room. And the Holy Spirit is going to come upon you. And you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And you will begin to speak and to do and to live in a whole other life. I mean, Jesus didn't even let them start ministry until they first obeyed his voice. And out of 500 plus people, only 120 people were willing to show up and grow. I hate to say this, but not everyone's going to grow this year. Because it's the truth. Not, every, not everyone's going to take this serious this year. Not everyone's going to really pay attention to want to grow with intention. But I pray that you're not that person. I pray that you really take it serious because this is the year where God's saying, okay, um, this is the year where I'm going to separate uh, the goats from the sheeps. And I need those who are going to hear my voice and that are going to obey me and that are going to follow me. And so I believe that God's going to start something this night. This night, God is starting something. I'm, I'm, I'm going to be so excited. I'm going to be all up in your grill. I know that, you know, the church keeps growing here. That's awesome. But this year I've committed to start, um, you know, approaching. I'm going to start approaching a bunch of you. I'm going to try to get to everyone in this church and just get all, all up in your grill and be like, okay, what are you I am? What are you allowing? What are you doing? What's, what's happening in your life? And I know that's going to be a project, but guess what? Uh, I know that I know that God is serious about our growth this year. Are you serious about it? For real? Sandy, stand up. Let go of yesterday. You have to let it go. You can't allow yourself anymore to keep reliving and the what if and, and that could have and why didn't it. You, I'm telling you, God is going to completely restore you. you. You need to take off the, the rags. Take off, take off whatever, try to cling on. You just take that off. You just say, no, Father. Literally, spiritually, I want you to see it by the Spirit of God. And you have to just begin to, to take off those 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 dirty rags that the enemy just tried to come and, and devalue you and, and, and uh, make you less than. And you, 
you just, you take that off in the name of Jesus right now. You just say, Father, this is the year where I am going to believe in my worth. I am going to believe in my worth. I am worth, worth it and I'm worthy of it. And you receive that right now. I'm telling you. You are going to elevate your life to a whole other level this year. You are. But every day you have to allow God to do it. And every day you're going to have to start speaking what you are. Not where you've been. Are you ready? It's going to be awesome. And your kids, oh my God, get ready what God's going to do with them as well. <laughs> Look at this. In Jude 20 it says, but you, beloved, building yourselves up on your most holy faith, praying in what? The Holy Spirit. This is the year that I'm going to remind all of us that we have the Spirit of God that lives in us. And he says, and this is what's going to build you up, praying in the Holy Spirit. You see, because there's only so much you and I can pray. You know, we can pray good prayers in our language. We can pray goofy prayers. We can pray unscriptural prayers. <laughs> we can pray um, selfish prayers. We can pray all kinds of prayers in our language. But the Bible says in Romans, but when you pray in the spirit, you pray the perfect prayer. That's why he says here, but you, beloved, building yourselves up in your most holy faith, pure faith. You can't grow without the faith that we need in order to accomplish what God wants us to have this year. So he says, how do you do that? By praying in the Holy Spirit. By praying in the Holy Spirit. And I want to be honest, I want you to be honest with me. How many here? by a raise of hands, can say, you know, Pastor, I am strong when it comes to the area of praying in the Holy Spirit. As a matter of fact, it's my daily routine. It's, it's what I do every day. By a raise of hands, how many would say that's me? Every day. I'm talking about every day, not every other day. Okay, good. Awesome. Awesome. Okay. We have to do more of that this year. We have to do more of that this year. With, with intention. Now, all the other half that, that didn't lift their hand, I'm going to remind you why it's important. And there's probably some people here that are probably saying, what do you mean by praying in the Holy Spirit? Well, let's go through some scriptures here. Look what it says in Acts 2, 1 through 4. And then we're going to get into some ministry time. Look at this. It says, when the day of Pentecost had fully come. So we know that Jesus, right before he uh, uh, ascended back to the Father, he told the disciples, I want you to go and wait. And what sucks is that out of 500, only 120 were willing to grow. And, uh, and so the 120, they showed up, men and women. And it says it was the day of Pentecost had fully come. And they were all with one accord in one place. And then suddenly there came a sound from heaven. I'm believing that there's a sound from heaven that we're going to experience tonight here. As a rushing mighty wind. And it filled the whole house where they were sitting. And then there appeared to them divided tongues. Everybody say divided tongues. See, um, it wasn't just one tongue. It was 120 tongues. It was divided tongues of fire. In other words, Nicole, God has a specific fire for you. God has a specific fire for you. God has a specific fire for you. And each one were filled with the Holy Spirit. It says... Then there appeared to them divided tongues as a fire, and one sat upon each of them. So just picture just a bunch of tongues of fire on every single one of us. And I'm going to explain to you why you need this, so just stay with me. And it says, and they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, and they began to speak with other tongues. As the Spirit gave them utterance. As who gave them utterance? Spirit. So, so. The Holy Spirit, as you allow, I am going to allow the Holy Spirit tonight to baptize me either for the first time or tonight you're going to say, Father, I am going to allow you to baptize me with a fresh fire of the Holy Spirit. Because I'm telling you, the fire of God is the only person 
who can prune us, who can remove all the, the, the junk off of us. It's only the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the only one who can purify us. He's the only one who can help us, who can lead us, who can guide us. The, 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 the Holy Spirit is the one who can give us the counsel that we need, to, especially for you business people that, that said, I'm going to start my business this year. Well, guess what? You better be so hooked up with the Holy Spirit because he'll give you discernment. He'll tell you exactly who to link up with and who not to. Okay, I'm telling we need the wisdom of God. Okay, so they were all in one place. Number one, let me give you some, uh, some, some remembrance for the purpose of the Holy Spirit. Praying in tongues, okay, empowers you to engage spiritual warfare from the position of victory. You got to know that right now. Because this year, guess what? You and I are going to be hit with challenges. It's not if I get hit, it's when I get hit. However, when I pray in the Holy Spirit, I believe that in 2018, that before the hit comes, that the Spirit of God is going to reveal it to you before it happens. See, and it positions you. When you pray in the Spirit, he says, pray in the Spirit, and it will happen, and it will build you up in your most holy faith, and faith will get you through. We need the Holy Spirit. So when you pray in tongues, it empowers you to engage in spiritual warfare. It empowers you to engage. Come on, the greatest weapon that you and I have is the Spirit of God who lives in us. And we have to start thinking that way. That way you stop quitting and you stop throwing in the towel and you stop getting funky. You say, whoa, whoa, wait a minute. Man, I got the, the empower on the inside of me. Man, I can do this. Greater is he who lives in me than, than whatever it is that I'm facing out in this world. And you got to start thinking this way. Here, here's what the scripture says in Ephesians 6.18. It says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the what? Spirit. Praying sometimes. No, praying always. We are to pray in the Holy Spirit always. Always. Man, when you wake up in the morning, pray in the Spirit. Man, when you're driving to work, pray, turn off your goofy music. It's not building you up. You can do anything, but it may not be beneficial, right? Uh, while I was, how many have ever heard of Smith Wigglesworth? Okay, Smith Wigglesworth was, golly, that man, um, he's a legend. He's a legend. That man did so many crazy things. Um, when I was at the conference this week, there was this old man. He was probably like 90 years old, 90-something years old. I don't know. He looked like 150, but I don't know. He was old. And, and he started talking about when he was a kid, uh, Smith Wigglesworth used to stay in his house. And, uh, and he said he witnessed Smith Wigglesworth do some supernatural things like crazy stuff. Like when, when, when people came for healing, he moved in, 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 in a healing anointing like miracles. We're talking this man raised people from the dead and documented stuff. And so it was awesome to be in the presence of this man who's sharing these stories. And... Um, he shared that this, he was at one of his meetings, and this guy had this uh, uh, tumor on his, on his face, and it was just like bulging out. And Smith Wigglesworth punched the guy in the face. Like just punched the dude in the face. And, and you know what, you would think like, what is wrong with this psycho? Are you kidding me? But guess what, but when you're, when, when you're led by the Holy Spirit, he will make you... And lead you to do unusual things. Well, anyways, so nothing happened the first punch. And so so the guy's saying, and so he just kept punching him, punching him, punching him. And everyone was like freaking out like, oh, my God, he's, he's beating this guy down. Well, you know what ends up happening? As he's finished punching him, the thing literally just, it just burst and his face went back to normal. And then this other time, uh, this, this guy had a, a, a tumor in his stomach. And... Uh, and he punched the guy in his stomach. Just he was all into punching for some reason, you know. Just, just it's like he had the punch anointing. You know what I'm saying? But but for some of us that are so immature, it's like yeah, right, whatever. Okay, well then you know that's why I am what I allow. Yeah. Because if you want to link up with God, God wants to do awesome things in your life, but you got to give Him permission. If not, guess what? You're going to be the same old boring you. Aren't you tired of being boring? I like, I, like to, I like to party wherever I go, right? And so he's just sharing story after story. But one of the things was 
uh, Smith Wigglesworth never listened. There was no TV in his time. He never listened to music. And he would never read any other book other than the Bible. That's all he would read every day for hours a day. No wonder he walked in power. You see, the difference between the, 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 the old century church and the believer of today, there is a difference. They walked in power. We don't. That's the difference between those Christians and today's. They're the same men and women that are just human beings with a nature of flesh like, like we are. The difference is that they walked in power. And so, and so uh, he was telling, the, the old man was saying, hey, yeah. He's like, yeah, my dad was reading the newspaper one day. And Smith Wigglesworth walked into the kitchen and said, uh, what are you doing? I'm reading the paper. He's like, you don't read that rubbish in front of me, you know, and just grab the paper and just throw it away. I mean, this man was intense. You know why? Because he was always walking in the power of God. See, everybody wants to grow until they look at the price tag and say, oop, <laughs> it's a little bit too much. And so what you do is you do spiritual window shopping instead of walking in and getting what you and I have been given by God and God wants you to receive it. No more spiritual window shopping. It's time to go in and it's time to pay the price because you're going to look good on it. Amen? Yeah. We're going to have Jesus fashion in 2018. You're going to, you and I are going to smell like Jesus this year. Amen. We're going to smell like him. Yeah, we're going to have, there's going to be such a presence of God in your life this year. Man, there's going to be such a joy in your life this year. You're not going to walk around stressed and worried and funky and weird. No, no, that's what, those, that, enough. That was 2017. This is 2018. Vicki, the anointing of God. God wants to, God wants to uh, multiply the anointing. And you need it because I know what you're about to do is, is not going to be an easy task. And so more than ever, I'm telling you, Vicki, you need, you need to be closer to the Holy Spirit. You need to, Vicki. Lives depend on it. The Holy Spirit is going to reveal to you the key to the restoration and healing of those kids. He's going to give it to you. And, and you know what? And the government is going to be like, how did you, how did you guys do that? And, and you know what? God's going to give you that platform, and you're going to be bold. God's, God wants you to be bold. He wants you to be a lion. When you walk, you walk with the authority like a lion. You're not a kitty cat. You're not a, you know, um, uh, a mountain lion. No, you're a lion. And you're going to walk in places. You're going to walk in government, and it's going to be this authoritative lion of faith. And when you see those children uh, that have been trafficked and, and, and abused. The Spirit of God is going to just be so heavily upon you. You'll be like the woman version of Smith Wigglesworth. Whenever he did something for God, people were instantly healed. Why not believe for that? I'm telling you. Yeah, change. That's it. It's, it's now. Are you ready? Yeah? You are? Awesome. You watch and see. Just lift your hand to heaven. Just say, Father, I receive it this year. Say it. I receive it this year for me. Say, tell yourself, I'm, I am going to grow up. I am going to change. I am. Claudia, same thing. I am going to be God's woman. I am going to be favored by him. Are you ready? It's, it's time to take stuff serious. You ready? Cool. I'm trying. I'm gonna be all in your faces this year. I mean, we just may do this for weeks. I don't know. We'll see. But we're gonna do this. Number two, praying in tongues gives you supernatural understanding of God's mysteries. 
1 Corinthians 14, 2 says, For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men, but to God. So don't be that person that's in here, that, that, that Christian that's so grown up. You're like, well, we're not supposed to pray in tongues in the church. Praise God. No, listen, you don't pray, you're not praying to men. You're praying to God when you pray in the Holy Ghost. So when I say pray in the Spirit, you're praying to the Father who releases the mysteries that you and I are searching. Look, let's keep reading. He says, uh, he says, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit, he speaks mysteries. In other words, look at, it, look at the Holy Spirit this way. The Holy Spirit is your Google. He searches what you don't understand. Who doesn't use Google? I mean, I use Google for everything. When I want to, you know, how do you, use, how do you uh, open a second church? It's like, <laughs> right? It's like everywhere, you know? Literally, you want to learn how to tie a shoe, how do you tie? They, you can find it on Google. Well, Holy Spirit says, listen, I am your Google. And I can help you find anything that you lack. You want to know why you're in that situation? I'll tell you. But you got to pray in the Holy Spirit. I believe that if we would pray more in the Spirit, we would get our answers quicker. But we're looking for man's answers instead of looking for God's answers. Oh, I know that's good. I know that. Number three. Can you throw me a bottle of water, somebody, please? Or is that white? That white. I think that white one there. There you go. Nope. That, that, there you go. Thank you, sir. Number three, praying in tongues grants you access to other revelatory gifts of the Holy Spirit. Let me give you a verse here. It says in uh, 1 Corinthians 12, 8 and 10, it says, For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another prophecy, to another discerning of spirits, to another different kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues, etc. So praying in tongues actually unlocks the revelation of the Holy Spirit in your life. In other words, when you begin to pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit will reveal to you the very gift that God has placed inside of you. And then you'll be able to operate in those gifts, whether it's words of wisdom, words of knowledge, uh, whether it's prophecy, the Spirit of God will reveal those to you. And uh, it's a beautiful thing. Number four, praying in tongues opens up the Bible in a new living way as you read it. Listen, this is how I read my Bible. You can do it too if you like. I never read my Bible to read my Bible. This is how I start. I sit down, I grab my journal, I grab my Bible, I close my eyes and I say, Holy Spirit. What would you have me read today? And I wait. And I just wait. This works for me. I don't know if how it's going to work for you. But then the Holy Spirit will show me the chapters. Or sometimes he'll just show me the verses that I need to read. And as he's showing me these in my head, I can see it in vision. I start writing them down. And you know what's interesting? By the time I finished reading whatever God gave me, it was the same theme at every single chapter or every verse I read. It was the same message. When you do things like that, you become a lot more confident in being led by the Holy Spirit. So when you, when you read your Bible, he brings the words alive. You read it different. It just doesn't, it's no longer just reading. It's, man, the Holy Spirit would begin to, it takes me two hours to read two chapters. Literally, that's how long it takes me to read two chapters. Why? Because the Holy Spirit will begin to reveal things to you and just give you stuff. But that's with intention. Why? You pray in the Spirit. You pray in the Spirit and He'll give it to you. Okay, look at this. In John 16, 13, it says, However, when He, the Spirit of truth, has come, He will guide you into all truth. For He will not speak on His own authority, but whatever He hears, He will speak. So check it out. I pray and then... He goes to the Father, the Father comes to the Spirit, the Spirit comes to me, and then boom. And that's how that works. Number five, when praying in tongues, you are speaking directly to God. 1 Corinthians 14, 2 says, for he who speaks in tongues does not speak to men, but he speaks to who? God. God. And the last thing is this as we go into prayer now. Check this out. Acts chapter 8, verse 14 through 18 says this. And the apostles in Jerusalem heard that the people in Samaria, or we'll just say it this way, 
that the people of Elevate Church had accepted God's word. They did what? They what? Accepted. They, they, another word for accepted is they allowed. You got to allow every scripture, every, every, every chapter to be yes, God. If God said it, it's yes. You're not going to fight against it anymore. This year, 2018, you're just, and you're going to test God. You're going to test, you're going to be like, God, you know what? This year, whatever I read in your word, that's exactly what I'm going to do. To the T. Okay, look. So uh, they accepted God's word. So they sent Peter and John to Samaria. When they arrived there, they prayed for the new believers. So they started praying for their stuff, their needs. Okay, Father, you know, you know, heal their body, whatever, whatever, right? But they also prayed that they would receive who? Holy Spirit. Check this out. And the Holy Spirit had not yet what? Come on any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. So they've had water baptism. Then Peter and John placed their what? Hands on them. And they received what? The Holy Spirit. And Simon watched as the apostles placed their hands on them. And he saw that the Spirit was given to them. So he offered money to Peter and John. That's a whole other story about this, this Simon. Simon was, uh, <laughs> he was a sorcery. He, he, uh, he did witchcraft. And he was getting paid to, uh, to read uh, palms and, and to, uh, to do a bunch of uh, witchcraft. And so he, he comes to Jesus after he heard the word. He accepted the word of God. He receives Jesus Christ. But here's what's pretty awesome. You know what this story tells me? That if you're new in the Lord and you still have a little bit of residue of your old life, you know, God's grace is on you. But there comes a time where you got to grow up. You got to mature. And so Simon goes like, dang, I want some of that. How much can I pay for that? And they're like, dude, are you kidding? This, this is free 99. Like, you don't, you don't pay for this. I mean, if you read the story, Peter rebuked that dude. Like, he's like, man, you know what's going to happen? You're going to die. He's like, oh, no, pray that I don't die. And, but I'm telling you, the only reason that people say, well, I didn't, I didn't get nothing. I, I don't feel nothing. It's because you don't allow him. You don't allow him. That's the only reason your head is in the way. This year, I am going to receive everything you want me to have, Father. This year, I am going to pray in tongues. This year, I am going to be filled with the Holy Spirit. This year, I am going to be filled with power. I am going to lay hands on the sick and they will recover. I am going to walk into rooms and change the atmosphere. I am. I am. If today's message impacted you in any way and you want to help us spread the gospel with a financial gift, text the number below and we know that someone's life will be changed the same way that yours was today.